This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get awesome, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA. And we're ready to get into the awesome things of the week. First of all, with me from Big Bank International Esquire. He's a gadget guru over there somewhere downtown in his ivory tower. Uh, John Chichillo is with us. And also an avid composter. And also an avid composter, as we were found out about on the uh, Facebook Live. We'll throw that on the Patreon as well. Uh, if, you, if you want to talk composting, come hit me up. I was like, up. what are the benefits of composting? Well, you have a Death Star in your backyard. That's You, you got me there. <laughs> you got me there. Uh, also with us, back and relieved from the new announcements. Holy crap. Just today. <laughs> we'll get into it. Yeah, she's she's the marketing and sales director at I don't even know how many things right now. Oh my gosh, my life just got really weird. <laughs> yeah. extra weird, extra weird. weird? I would say weirder. I mean, yeah. we've, we've talked about your 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 flagging on Facebook from all the um, uh, <laughs> things you odd alternative things you've tried selling over there. You just selling, <laughs> selling, displaying, pushing. Yeah, like. yeah. You're just you're just 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 pushing it all on the on the on the on the community there Mm -hmm. so awesome well hey good to have you back and uh everybody's in studio this week no cat cam oh what what are you are you throwing that up (laughs) i don't know what i'm I'm debating (laughs) ask the the viewers of awesome cast do i try this harder mike's harder lemonade or purple grape thing or drink coffee (laughs) what's gonna happen well we know what's gonna happen if i drink them both (laughs) well there's a there's an ingredient issue we're trying to figure out and it's kind of hard (laughs) so to figure out on on a can of alcohol that qualifies as a beer are you (laughs) you're like juggling it over there (laughs) i am i need i would like a table i you need a table i mean uh, the optimist has one just to open up optimist over there you can hold it he holds your beer pretty nicely oh nice so um, but anyways, this is the awesome cast. Check it out. Everything at awesomecast.com. <laughs> Give it, it's a bigger beer. It might be a little top heavy. So, so watch yourself over here. Oh, the <laughs> chain's in the way. He's, uh, hold on. She's doing this right now. <laughs> oh, the camera's in the way. Oh, no. And there we go. Oh, no. oh, we'll have to get a picture oh, of that. Oh, um, oh, I'm afraid. is it? Nope. It's a little oh, heavy. Oh, oh, I'll a little just heavy. drink some. Hold on. I'll fix this. <laughs> Awesome no cast. problem. Is it welcome to drink cast, nap it's cast, fine. whatever? Well, the you case drink may cast be. before you nap cast. Oh, mm-hmm. that makes a lot more sense. So, um, anyways, it is the awesome cast, and we're drinking here over at awesomecast.com. <laughs> uh, you can check out everything there, including how to subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast platform or video versions. And uh, please, if you do, follow us on whatever podcast app you have or on the YouTube or wherever. Make sure to give a like, give a star, give a rating, give a review if you are so inclined, and that's going to help us get out there um, to more awesome casters that might dig the show. We really appreciate the help, appreciate the help on that. Also, you just a reminder, you can uh, ask your voice device, your Google Home, your uh, Air AirPod, is it AirPod? Apple AirPods? HomePod. HomePod. I can't Poop-pod. remember the name of it. Pod, <laughs> <laughs> Echo, your Poop Pod, whatever. Ask it to uh, play the Awesome Cast uh, podcast. Uh, hook up the app. You might have to do it the first time, but then you just get to uh, tell the tell your doohickey to do it, and you listen to the podcast. Uh, we're also here every Tuesday at Awesome Cast Facebook Live at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. That is the chat that we're checking out. Uh, and We see Dave Potter and our friend Brandon from the Kansas City out there hanging out tonight as well and a few other people, it looks like. And also, we are streaming on the Sorgatron Media and Awesome Cast platforms across Periscope, uh, Twitch, Mixer. I just fixed that. We're hanging out with Ninja there. YouTube and so much more. But again, the main chat room is there. And if you have, you want to be part of the conversation, you're you're catching us on another platform or you're not catching us live here on Tuesday night, uh, please use hashtag AC458. 
AC458 in your tweets at AwesomeCast on the Twitter to continue the conversation. And speaking of those other pa- uh, platforms, please go check out our friends at RiversEdgePGH.com and The405Media.com where they're carrying us on their, on their schedules. Go check those sites for those times. Thank you to our Patreon supporters, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast, uh, including Matt Weller, John Diggy DeGore, and John Carmen at the Coffee Club five dollar level and our friends the longest running patreon supporter uh, uh at the fan of the show one dollar level michael fedor uh you can uh, also please support the show really appreciate it over patreon.com slash awesome cast kind of uh it, it's a really good signal to know that we're on to something here if you guys are contributing uh over there also hit up awesome cast at circuitron media.com you're talking to producer missy if you're interested in advertising opportunities uh or if you want to be joining us in studio or whatever the case or bring an awesome cast to your town it's an option too <gasps> technically <Yes. laughs> you want to go on the awesome cast door yes. we'll get a van <laughs> Awesome cast van. It was tricked out. And then by the end of the trip, Chilla will have tricked it out with um, um, voice commands to uh, <laughs> to whatever we need, right? Oh, everything. The lights will turn on and mm-hmm. off. The car will start up. It'll be like Batman car here. But van. But van. But yeah. van. But <laughs> van here. The cast van. The awesome van. The awesome van. Awesome van here. Uh, anyways, oh uh, jeez, guys, it's so like Night Rider all over again. I, you know, everything you've mentioned is in Rocket League. I am <clears throat> loving poking at that and seeing like what cars they have. Like, there's a Batman tumbler. There's like a a '91 Batman Batmobile. Like, there's there's a lot of fun stuff in there. DeLorean and Kit, of course. Anyways, anyways, enough of that. Enough of that. We'll get to video games in a little bit. So we, we kind of tease a little bit. Katie, some big stuff was announced today, and I know you've been keeping it under your hat for a while. Oh, gosh, too long. <laughs> too many secrets. <laughs> Hashtag too many secrets. Hashtag too many secrets. Uh, so, you know, I'm the director of sales and marketing. See, mm-hmm. I got it. <laughs> for the Scarehouse, and today we announced the Scream District. So what's going to be happening with that is uh, we are going to be located in the strip district. It's going to be the basement, which is our 18 and over immersive horror experience, along with an escape room stalked by a killer. That um, is- <laughs> yeah, stalked by a killer escape room. Yep, stalked by a. That's killer a escape new room. one. Yep, that's brand new. So uh, you get to see an actual scare house, full on scare house uh, escape room, stalked by a killer. Super excited about it. Um, going to be really cool. So yeah, you go down to Scream District, which will be in the Strip District. We haven't announced when the dates, and we haven't ex- announced the exact location. Mm-hmm. But uh, you can check out the basement and um, stalked by a killer for now, and then uh, next year the Scare House comes back in a brand new location. So all That's kinds awesome. of awesome. Awesome. in a different location than the other location. Correct. Or, the, or this location. Strip District, a little too tiny for Scare House. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few people ask, and it just mm. there's just not enough. And everybody. And then the other question is. Is, oh, Scare House, did they take over uh, Terror Town, where they were located? Um, if you go to the previous location... <laughs> I was going to say, Terror Town's a hole in the ground right now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> they tore that whole building down, so no, we did not. No, <laughs> no, no, no. So, I would... And, and, and I don't know, I've never been in Terror Town to know what they were... Like. Yeah, I, I never went through when they were open. It was just like, I just knew it was a sign, there was a sign when you went by and has been for years, and mm-hmm. I guess it don't matter anymore. Uh, so, that's awesome. It, it's awesome that it's, it's, it's in the city, it's it, it's probably going to be more accessible to a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And uh, I know there's a lot of new and different stuff going on down there at the Strip District in oh, general. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. They're doing a lot of expansion. We've seen a lot of stuff happen in the brief time we've been down there. Mm-hmm. So super excited about it and so glad to tell everybody about it. But life just got extra weird. Mm-hmm. I, I'm now a director of sales and marketing for a haunted house, an 18 and over poor experience and helping push an escape room. <laughs> Stalked by a killer. <laughs> I mean, it's all within my creepy wheelhouse, apparently. Because yeah, I'm yeah. Just, human being. I mean, just more things for uh, Facebook to flag you on, right? Yes, I'm so, so excited. Yes. I get to find out. I, I think I, I've, I've been hit for most of the big ones. I think there's only a couple I've missed, and I'll have to figure out which ones those are, because mm. I've been hit from anything from political to um, selling weapons. Wait, political? Yeah, I was tagged. It looks like this is a political post, and it was actually when Scarehouse went to Kennywood's event where they brought back Noah's Ark, 
and we took a picture with Mayor Peduto. Our zombies oh. took a picture with Mayor Peduto, and they're like, "This is a political ad. Do you have <laughs> um, the essentially? Are you allowed to post this? And would you like to apply to be listen, able to post? Listen, listen. <laughs> are these zombies endorsing the mayor? <laughs> I mean, then you have to. Have, does this mean you have to have equal time, uh, equal zombie time with the Republican candidate as well? Yeah, I mean, it's only fair. <laughs> just take <laughs> like, my zombies in the road. <laughs> But it was just, uh, that was a weird thing. Yes. Yeah, so I, I think there's only a handful of things that Facebook has not flagged me for yet in, a, in an ad. So, or on a post. So we'll have to, I'll make that listen and we'll have to try. <laughs> in the day to day, you know, and, and, and when Scarehouse was started some, like, was it 99 they first started? Mm-hmm. I'm sure they were not thinking about like the, you know, someday dealing with a Facebook that was going to flag everything that they did. No. You know, so. I can't even, like, the the way things have changed in 20 years, Mm -hmm. which is wild that it's been around for 20 years, which is super cool. But yeah, it's it's amazing and it's all exciting and fun and just, it's been a brain teaser (laughs) (laughs) the last few months. That's great. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to see. uh, Change is good and and I'd like to see that it's, it's expanding and changing. Uh, Chilla, what is your awesome thing? So I found this, I don't even remember where, um, <clears throat> I've been looking for portable chargers for my switch mm-hmm. because in my bag, I don't like plugs that the prongs stick out. I want something that's foldable. So while I was looking for portable uh, yeah, it, chargers, that does become annoying. Cause I like this, this new laptop I got has like the box like like you would get with an apple one mm-hmm. but nothing folds in and i'm worried about it's, breaking those off if they break off or it'll scratch something yeah. else in the bag i'm more worried about it poking through a screen that's mm-hmm. what i'm worried about mm-hmm. so because you know i carry like 18 screens with me at all times mm-hmm. so, but so i found the and i'm probably going to mispronounce this the gen key gen key genki however you want to go with it it's the it's an actual full dock Mm-hmm. So it's a convertible dock for the Nintendo Switch. So it's to me it looks like it's a little bit bigger than your your iPhone or your iPad charger. Um, it's has the fold down prongs like you would expect. On the other side of it, it has a USB C port, a USB A port, and interestingly enough, an HDMI port. So you plug your switch into the USB-C port. So you need a C to C connection, I think. And then if you plug the HDMI port into your TV, it Mm -hmm. converts the whole plug into a dock. And then you have an additional travel USB-C port to charge other things in. So instead of, so now instead of like having that dock, that's like still like $80, which feels like all it does is convert your thing into HDMI. Like yep. this, this replaces that entire thing. It replaces the entire thing. To me, it makes it more portable. I will say, and maybe I'm the exception to the rule, but I actually use my dock kind of like you're supposed to. Mm-hmm. So my, so what they, what I don't think they talked enough about is the, the dock that's a glorified USB C to HDMI dock um, has an additional. I want to say at least two, maybe three USB ports on it. Mm -hmm. So like I plug my pro controller in there. I plug my, I have a a four joy con charger block that I plug in there. So I have a lot of other things plugged into my normal everyday dock, but for like an on the go type thing, if I just wanted to take the, the switch with me, plug it into this and then use the joy cons as my controller, this is perfect. That's awesome. So, and it comes. Oh, sorry, it comes in at fifty nine dollars. Not bad. And that's cheaper than another dock too. It's cheaper than another dock. You not only get the convert, or the the covert dock, you get a an additional. You get the USB C cable you would mm-hmm. need. Um, and if you go global, you can get the global adapter pack. Awesome. So I I am super excited to get this. I think it's going to launch in November or, or it's going to ship. In November or December. Awesome. Well, I, I, I'm surprised there's not more uh, um, options like this uh, popping up either. But uh, it, it feels like there should be. Like it feels like there should be like like Mad Cats. Is Mad Cats still a thing? Or or Pelican guess, or something. There, so there was. You know who made one? What's the knockoff Best Buy brand? Um, Insignia. 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 Mm-hmm. Insignia. Yeah. They had they had a, a 
USB-C dock that mm-hmm. could be used. Um, there was kind of like a fo- it was a weird like origami foldable type thing that you could. It was a little bit smaller to fit in a bag, but it still came in at like a an eighty. I think it was an eighty dollar price point, and I'm mm. like, eh. still a little much. Still, still a little much, and much. it's still a little bulky for what. I, yeah. I just want something I can throw in my bag and not have to worry about it scratching something else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, be interesting. Uh, I like that. I, I like that as an option. Oh, I'm still haven't got my switch yet, but uh, but I'll be. But by the that. time you do all the accessories, all the that accessories. You'll have. That's right. There's gonna be no growing pains because mm-hmm. I'll I'll have just been uh, uber patient and playing uh, Brawlhalla instead of Super Smash Brothers, mm-hmm. which I just discovered um, because they put WWE characters in. But I don't know if I want to buy WWE characters for a freemium game for ten dollars a piece. But I really kind of want to. Uh, but anyways, it's actually on like every platform. If you want to check that out and play me in Brawlhalla, um, I this is this is nothing new. But I finally had kind of a a computer that I could dedicate to uh, this idea. Uh, it, actually, it's the one over here in the studio. I realized like, hey, it's just sitting here the rest of the time. So I loaded up uh, Steam on this uh, this newer laptop that we got our hands on for the studio. And um, you may remember discussing uh, Steam Link in the past. Whoop, that's Katie. <laughs> there it is. There's the right button. Um, it, it, so ideally, this is something they were selling for a bit that you could get a, um, a box that you would hook up to your TV and over your network it would play video games like from your computer onto the tv right so you know you get a controller and do that thing but the other nice thing is like there was apps that uh apple had a problem with for a little bit right where um they were not allowing this thing to work uh, they cited something in their user agreement and and there was a whole back and forth about steam um but now it's there and uh, i can tell you i was playing street for street fighter 5 on my iphone uh, a little bit ago, I got that nice Steel Series uh, Nimbus controller that works with the most of the Apple devices. Um, you know, tried it on my iPad, tried it on my iPhone, and uh, and and streamed it here in the in the you know just had a project where I was like you know uh, uh, burning DVDs last week, and I was like, well, I don't want to touch the computer. I want to do something else. So I'm pulling up Street Fighter and just playing a few fights while I'm waiting for this thing to the process and it was a really nice other than maybe my computer's maybe a little slow for street fighter 5 uh, but i was playing some other games on there and it worked really smooth uh, at least in our studio network uh environment so and i'm also surprised because i've been um i've been booting up uh uh some some steam computers at the house and they're recognizing my steam setups here in the studio wonder how that is i recognize them whether it'll actually stream is a good question but um maybe they open that up and i'm not aware of it that'll actually just pull things over we were talking about the xbox uh one that you could eventually run as a server uh, across the internet uh you know instead of just the, the cloud servers but um I, that that could be that could be an interesting uh, option too but i mean it just kind of opens it up that i can just pull this up pull up a game controller and be able to to play that, and, and I think that just kind of helps the expandability of not having to like, all right, I got to boot this computer up, uh, find a place for it, and 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 do that whole thing. So um, I think it's a pretty good option, and um, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to kind of playing with it a little bit more, and uh, you know as we go here. So I was pulling up some uh, I was pulling up some uh, balls of steel, the old 3D realms uh, pinball game. That got in the 3D realm, so it has like a Duke Nukem level and everything on it. So uh, it's Steam Link, and and I did notice it did pop up on my Apple TV. So I'm hoping to play with that here in the near future too. So when you'll soon be able to play with your Xbox controller, which I'll still be able, to, yeah, <laughs> which will be awesome. And we determined, uh, Chilla helped me figure out which of my Xbox controllers are compatible um, with something like that or with the Xbox at least. So looking forward to that hey, anything like it's cool that like the barrier has been lowered because it's always like you know pc games and stuff like i'll set up a computer for it download a bunch of games and then like next time i go to play them which will be like two weeks later is too many updates and i don't want to play right that's why i don't keep up on Fortnite. because every time i sit down it's like hey you need to download two- 1.6 gig of yeah there's 1.6 gigs to download to your phone right and i'm not always on wi-fi so that becomes kind of a problem when you're traveling that's a big problem so there's that. Well, speaking of um, speaking of motivation, sometimes we gotta get motivated here. 
<laughs> with a little bit of caffeine. And uh, during the day here, it's kind of nice to roll down uh, to our friends at Muddy Cup Coffee House. There's a few of them. I know there's one in your neighborhood there. There's one in my neighborhood. Uh, I wish they stayed open just as... Yeah, <laughs> that's the only thing I just yeah I wish they were I wish they would be the perfect place to just drop in and grab a coffee before awesome cast right uh, but uh, they're a really good really good spot here I like going in and just uh, reading some good Apple news and hanging out and checking my email you know maybe before I come up here to work sometimes and uh, it's a, a really good spot in the neighborhood go check them out they got a few different locations just search Muddy Cup Coffee House, Bellevue, Dormont, and right here in Beachview. Just want to give a shout out and a little bit of support to one of our neighborhood friends here uh, in the Beachview neighborhood. So, hey, uh, Chachi uh, is continuing his uh, the game journey.com, his thousand one video game journey. Uh, based on based on a book, he read a book and it just changed his entire life. Uh, but he just uh, he just posted a wrap up over there actually of um, his N sixty four section that he just finished. Um, so so you know he, you know we, when he started this up, he had a sweet setup with uh, uh, he got like USB controllers for like everything from NES, Super Nintendo, N sixty four, PlayStation, right, and in Genesis I think as well. And uh, he, he he talked a little bit in this one about um, about how the uh, the the N sixty four one really really made a difference uh, for this because I, I guess. Is there is there really any controller as unique as the N sixty four was at the time? I mean, just and for, there's been I don't feel like there's been anything ever since. Mm-mm. No, there really has it. It was it, I mean the Dreamcast controller like it was something, but that I, I could I can play a Dreamcast game on an Xbox controller, right? Mm-hmm. I feel like if you just that button layout was so unique to the N sixty four with the C, with the C the C directions and everything like that. GameCube's kind of rough. To, yeah, hell, but GameCube's kind of adaptable. It gets weird when you put games on GameCube from other consoles. Like try playing Soul Calibur on there or Mortal Kombat. That gets weird. Oh, I forgot something I wanted to add to the notes. Uh-oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Speaking of, uh-oh. Speaking notes, of game notes. controllers. Go check them out at the gamejourney.com uh, to see uh, what he's going to get into next. I know it's been a huge huge blog project for our buddy Chachi over there. So you can also checking out uh, from uh, we we have a lot of stuff from the uh, Facebook groups. This is oh, is this really happening? So I remember Loot Crate. <laughs> I still have a lot of t-shirts from Loot Crate. Loot Crate was phenomenal. I have a lot of stuff from that. Loot. See, we Loot- subscribed to that for like a year and a half. I, I think like Loot Crate is like the entryway drug into other things because because <laughs> I I. I, I I left Loot Crate and then went to the Marvel box. Oh. And then the Marvel box, they quit shipping. Like, they stopped. <gasps> so this is the thing. Because I think the crate... So Loot Crate was a mystery crate. You paid... I think we paid... Um, it, was, it wasn't in, like, 1993. Because it, it, well, it was spelled lead or something like that. Um, 1997, I think it was. $19.97. And you you don't know what you're gonna. Maybe they would announce a theme in advance. Yeah, they announced the theme. They announced the theme. I thought in advance enough that you could try to get in on it mm-hmm. if there was going to be enough boxes. And oh, then the, any the of the theme, leftover boxes. The, the theme is could. heroes, or the theme is villains, or the theme is space. And you're like, okay, I wanted that. And you, and you didn't really know what you're getting into. I got Ready Player One, the book. I have a ready. I still I read like two chapters of it. So I, I had a like long before the movie came out. I think mm-hmm. they I think they gave it out what, around because I think it says there was on the a book, re- there was a retro. It was a retro box. Yeah, like had all kinds of old retro stuff. You get it. cool stuff. You get like headbands and and armbands and t-shirts. There would almost always be a t-shirt. Funko Pop. Funko Pops, like a, you have a lot of kind of random um, uh, special edition Funko Pops. Well, unfortunately, as Brandon shares with us in the in the uh, Facebook group, um, Lucre actually filed for bankruptcy and plans to sell itself. I, again, the, the, <laughs> Lucre had a WWE box that they were putting out. I, I think it's just the the crate craze. Um, they they everybody you said Marvel had one right. Like everybody started doing their own. I've seen so many like wrestling crates from like pro wrestling tees and, and things like that, indie indie crates, stuff like that. And, and and I think it just it was a good idea and it <laughs> the first one's not always the most successful, is it? Right. Mm-hmm. So um and, and even in recent um weeks I've seen people on Twitter, like some I think maybe I'm talking about in the group or something, and um it, 
they weren't shipping. Like you would go and order something. Like sometimes they'll put things up for sale after the crate for like a pretty good markup. And um, people weren't getting them for like two months, right? Ooh. So there, there seemed to be like a shipping problem. They were having a supply problem and, and things like that. So, yeah, that's um, that's going to be interesting. I, I, I don't know. Maybe is it passed? I mean, do you, you know, do, do people as many have much interest in the crate? Was that kind of a fad kind of situation? I don't, I don't think. It's have a we moved on fad. to the mystery boxes on eBay? I don't think so. The, I I think it'll be revived by somebody, or they'll. Like, I thought, who was it? Was it GameStop? Someone was supposed to pick up a couple crate companies mm-hmm. and offer them in store. That sounds like a GameStop thing. And I, I still see people at, like, the different cons. There's, oh, dude, replay. Selling boxes. Did you yeah. see this, Katie? There was, a, there was, a, there was a, a, a guy that was literally just selling mystery boxes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, people love it. <laughs> it's a big deal. They were, like, wheeling and dealing for the boxes. It was crazy. Jeez. Um, Brandon says recently uh, they've been recycled items in the new boxes. Washington unboxing video. That's that's unfortunate. That's yeah. probably which again, like maybe those deals because you always saw like the stuff they had in there. Like, oh, this is like real stuff. Like this is like real brand stuff, mm-hmm. licensed th- you know stuff. Like they, they must have had some kind of deal. Maybe it's one of those things where they put a lot of money up front and didn't get uh, the 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 mass that they needed to keep it going. Doug's been sharing this one all day um, across a couple of groups I've been noticing. Spotify has unleashed its uh, podcasting pla- uh, podcasting dashboard. I'm sorry, uh, so we can it's it's come out of beta, and so maybe I can figure out what's going on with Spotify and our podcasters or our, <laughs> or our podcast. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Spotify for podcasters is the new platform. For the company uh, designed to give creators more control or at least insight into how the content is served up. So, oh, there's a handy video here, too, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> to explain podcasting to me. Thanks. Um, how do podcasts? How to pod? How do podcasts? But uh, so if you're, you know, for me, I, I know I'm on a um, with Fireside. We I click the button and supposedly we're on Spotify and um, and I see a couple downloads here and there, I guess. Uh, but uh, there, there we are. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> we are on there. If you, if you're not aware, I also don't know a lot of people that do use Spotify for their podcasting app necessarily. So I don't know. I don't know many people that use Spotify. Maybe I just. It, it's always know. that thing. Whenever I'm working a, um, um, whenever I'm working an event and somebody has music queued up mm-hmm. before the event, it's always Spotify. Oh, really? Yeah. That I've noticed. And then sometimes they don't pay for it, and we get commercials. Wheels. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so so I mean, it's I, that's me seeing it in a while there. But again, I don't think I don't I don't think we see it's like I feel like I'm the only person that uses Google Music, uh, for instance. I don't, cross maybe on Google. Cross Music. my well, of course Cross is. It was not on Apple Music, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. That's so, true. Mm-hmm. Uh, it He's was, not on Microsoft Music because they killed well, that. Actually, service. I saw He's one on Groove. One where uh, somebody was using music, um, they were using Title. Oh, now, now, and they were having problems because uh, Title kept saying that they were logged in on another computer and refused to play, and he had it logged off of his phone and everything. So, um, but th- that was the first time I've seen Title in the wild, uh, for sure. But anyways, uh, you know, it, it, another podcast platform, it's growing. And, um, well, we'll see what happens there between that and the, all this original content, supposedly, that uh, Apple's going to be putting out on their platform, too. So that landscape is definitely changing a little bit. Hey, you know what landscape is uh, uh, not changing um, except for just more more deliciousness? Our friends at Slice on Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> Our friends at Slice on Broadway, uh, sliceonbroadway.com, right here in, uh, up the street from the studio here in Beachview. Went in and hung out and talked wrestling with the guys in there today, as usual, as well as Carnegie, uh, PA, East End, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, uh, supporting po- Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Go check them out. Drop by. Let them know the awesome cast sent you, and you are not going to be disappointed in that. So uh, shout out to our friends there. Hey, um, I threw a video in. I don't know. I don't think I, I shared too much of this. 
did, Chilla, did I share much about the scoring technology and and how they made deers move over the uh, the auto drive challenge that I attended back in June? I don't remember. Is that I, a familiar? You, you may have you may have sh- shared very briefly some of the scoring, but I don't remember hearing about. So I think this this has just recently been uh, released uh, a video that we worked on out there as an interview with um, somebody that we've had on the awesome chat for a bit, Mike Zeman. And, and, and he talks a little bit in this video about the technology around the event and the scoring technology, uh, particularly uh, in the M city, which was this, this kind of made up city uh, that they had like interfacing with the traffic controls. Uh, and I think I mentioned this a little bit, like after the event, like how they had to interface with that. You can't just hit a button and turn something into a red light. Like it has to go through a cycle. And then there's these sleds where if you're on video, you see like the people coming across and the deer that shoots out in front of cars uh, are using GPS to make sure they're, they, they're always in a straight line and they detect the car coming to, 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 to move out in front of it and everything to really give a, a real challenge. Uh, so that's up over the SAE Collegiate Competitions uh, YouTube page. I linked it over there in the Awesome Cast uh, page as well. So please go check that out. It's a really cool thing to, to, to kind of look at that technology and some of the stuff we did back in June for the Auto Drive Challenge. And a disclaimer, it is one of a client of mine uh, that we, we have here with Sidekick Media Services. Uh, but uh, it, was, it was always real cool stuff that they're working on out there. I, I always like, I always drop into an event, go to Mike and say, hey, what's new? What's new this year? Mm-hmm. What are you guys working on? Is it, what should I be looking out for? So uh so that was a one one you can um look at <laughs> what is katie yes yeah. wait is this is this something that came up because of our chat beforehand about let others nap in your living room it's convenient what is this uh it's globe um it's globe living so before the show we were talking about how we all wanted to have nap cast instead mm-hmm. of awesome cast because we're all ready for a nap at this point and um so globe <laughs> like living is essentially an Airbnb, but what if you want to just nap or hang out in somebody's living room and you are able to essentially rent out your We're going to have to start room? renting out our couch here in the studio in off hours, aren't mm-hmm. we? You could earn up to $4,000 a month by sharing your home with our trusted network of professionals and business travelers to recharging on the go. So it's essentially you can rent it by hours or minutes or yeah, just it's a short-term rental. It's a, let's see. Busy professionals use Globe Homes instead of noisy coffee shops when they need privacy in between meetings or after a red-eye flight. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. I've oh. never slept in a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> well, just saying. Not on purpose. Not on purpose. But it will, it's always. Well, but it is a little bit of. Oh man, um, my. They won't let me into my my my. It's happened to me actually. Uh, they won't let me into my um, hotel until three, mm-hmm. and my flight landed at eleven thirty. What do I do? Mm-hmm. I really don't want to hang out in a coffee shop and be around people right now. I'll just sleep in my car. I rent a car. If you ever rent a car, it's even that's even more frustrating. You could rent out the passenger seat of your rent a car. <laughs> so I have questions. Yes. Oh okay. yeah. Yes. When does is is this a situation where like I'm sitting there working at my house and all of a sudden somebody comes to use my my sofa to nap like what? Well, I think you get a notification. I'm guessing or, it would be scheduled. You gotta well, join yeah. the. It's, you, it's gonna you, be scheduled. I get you that. gotta join the network mm-hmm. and then and then I'm sure there is like you know these are good nap times where my <laughs> my couch is available right and um and look i mean all the picture, people in these pictures look so friendly mm-hmm. you can you can earn up to four thousand dollars a month. What? Yes. That's crazy. By sharing your home with your trusted network of professionals and business travelers, recharging on the go. I like this guy, uh, Brendan. Brendan. With an E. That sounds like a trustworthy fr- yeah, individual. Yeah, Brendan. Brendan's got a beard. Trustworthy. Okay. Um, renting my home while I'm at the office or at the gym has been an easy way to dramatically reduce my cost of rent. I also love having access to other places throughout the city to recharge when I'm on the go. <laughs> so you just show up. <laughs> this is... This is... It, it's it's Uber meets couch surfing, basically. <laughs> and I want to point out, all these people are in San Francisco. Oh, that one's in New York. Brenda's in New York. Yeah, oh yeah. But he's too trendy for San Francisco. This guy, I mean, this guy's having a good old time here. Um, wow. And from the guests as well, again, all San Francisco for the most part. I mean, this is sorry. Like, we, you sign up for a wait list. I don't think we could do this in Pittsburgh just yet. Soon, so, maybe. Soon. Ooh, soon. So excited. Give up your couch. Katie, are you going to... Rent your couch. 
no. Or just participate <laughs> in everybody else's couches. I just give me all your couches. You're like, listen, if you got a couch in the strip district, uh, <laughs> I will take a nap in it. Yeah. My office has a couch now, so I don't need to do that. Oh, yeah. We're we're swanky now. Upgrades, mm-hmm. upgrades. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, let's see, uh, Chilla. Tell me about this uh, Impossible Mario level. Have, this, you, have you seen this? I wonder if this yes. is the one that so I someone, usually see. So someone, yeah, this is probably the one you usually see, but I have a twist for it. Because, okay. Ooh. So there's the Mario Maker 2 launched, I can't remember how long ago, a month. Oh, we're going to get pulled so. off of uh, YouTube with this one. Um, well, and I'll, someone I'll made this Impossible level where it's like all of the little flame things and you have to like run forward and then run back and, mm-hmm. and jump all I'm not showing more because I don't want to get pulled off of YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Because why would you? Because it's Mario. Nintendo. Uh, Nintendo is well, real so, bad with those. So click the link, the second link, because someone has remade that level for Counter Strike yes. in three D. What? Wow. So if you go to the second link and pick the hold on first. Oh, the link. second link in the dock. Oh, second link. The second link in that section. And they yeah. made it for Counter Strike. They made hold it for Counter Strike, and if you go to Oh, jeez. Um, oh, no. Oh, look at this. Look at this graphic. <laughs> so it's in 3D. It's it's a Mario level. It's like blocky and everything, but it's, it's you know, kind of on the side-scrolling platform, basically. But, but, but the camera, the only reason it's side-scrolling is because they had to have another player show you. Yeah. Like, from their point of view, the person playing the Counter-Strike level. So occasionally, like, it'll pan around. Wow. So oh, you can this, see this is, the person running. Oh, there through. it is. There's oh a 3D view. Oh, a 3D wow. View. Wow. He doesn't make it through the first time either. Spoiler. You know, what, <laughs> what, I, what I love about like the Mario version of the level. Oh, here we go with the guy that actually does it. With the Mario version of the level, like I love when it's like this person trying to dodge questions in a press conference and they show that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, it's like the perfect visual for that. Wow. This is cool. Also. Aww. Also, they're still doing things with Counter Strike. <laughs> well, they there's they still have the whole esports for wow. Counter Strike. It's on like TBS on Friday nights at eleven p.m. <laughs> oh, really? Like yeah. Okay. You're you're like my last like like hook into like hey, what's happening on regular TV, Chilla? Tell us about this thing you call cable. Yes, I'm, I'm still watching this guy go. Mm-hmm. Wow. This is this is incredible. It, it it doesn't look quite as maddening as the. My, because you have a third dimension. Yeah, you, you have a third kind of dimension move, like, to go move, through. You can move up and down and... and yeah, the back and forth and yeah. everything. So I, I don't know, but uh, it's uh, that's incredible. So he should. what you're saying is he needs to make it a little harder since it's in 3D. <laughs> I love... He, he falls down the hole and then just bounces back up to die. Like, like they, they didn't have a just disappear down the hole option for it. That's awesome. The hardest Mario level. Oh, geez. Uh, what else we got here? Um, excited to see this. There's a, a PS3 game called Journey. Um, it, it was one of those kind of indie titles, and I guess by all accounts, it, it, it didn't really make a whole lot of money. Well, it's coming to the App Store. <laughs> so I love... It's, it's out, I, isn't it? I love that we're getting just ports from PlayStation at this point. Yeah, I think it's out. It's $7.99. Um, it's kind of on my hit list. Uh, I still need to play Inside, so there's that. Uh, so it, it was, it's one of those, like, you're kind of uh, rolling through the desert, uh, uh, visually stunning-looking kind of games. Um, it's definitely definitely one of those, like, oh, man, I wish I had a PlayStation to play that, but now I can't on my phone. Um, it did make its way to the PS4, so it's available over there, too. I'm sure probably also, I mean, maybe not $7.99, but it might be a $10 title or something over there, too. So check it out. Support Indie, indie Rest. Uh, geez, what, what show is this? Indie Developers. Let's try that. So... <laughs> uh katie yes snap spectacles are still a thing yep do people generation re- do three people, do people remember what snap spectacles are i don't know they were um if you were in various locations i think i said was it vegas i was in vegas that was the only time i think i've seen a real one where you the vending machine where you walked up yeah. and you could buy from a vending machine we saw one in new york on the way back from thailand but it was after hours. It was just like a giant room storefront, and there you saw the vending machine like in the back. It's like hmm, hmm. But so this was like you can Snapchat with your glasses. Yeah, you just yeah. you just take pictures with your glasses. It was like the Google Glass, but cool. <laughs> <laughs> ah, 
uh, no. define cool. I, I was just a dig at you. you oh, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's Chilla's hey, now. Yeah, I used them. Hey, yeah. Chilla. I'm sorry. It was a dig at Chilla. I take That's it back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'd now. Get a, I'd get a Gen 3 set of Google Glass if they made Ooh. them. Mm-hmm. Would they be this trendy, though? This rose gold out of steel fancy glasses. Oh. So, yeah. So, now we're at the third generation of these uh, snap spectacles. And they can do 3D snaps, uh, all kinds of AR, 3D filters, 3D lenses, add stickers, and all this fancy stuff, which is really pretty cool, considering they're only like 300 and some dollars. Yeah, $380. Okay. Which is pretty neat. That doesn't seem too bad. No, considering... Well, the first ones were like 150 and 200 but um yeah these are pretty cool they are yeah so you can get to snapchat do some 3d things and you uh they have better they were talking about how but how much better they're getting at exporting what you're recording on your glasses to other things which is fun so yeah you can get fancy new spec snap snapchat spectacles and uh look super cool have you ever played with uh the any of the first generation ones no i've never gotten a chance to play. somebody with did let me borrow um a first edition of them uh, for a while and it, it was um it was interesting it was really interesting um, oh, looking at these photos it's pretty cool yeah the i thing mean that, the thing that i'm hoping and i'm guessing it's just because it's an animated gif to kind of show you the parallax mm-hmm. um i'm hoping that the picture quality is better yeah because it looks very yeah. grainy and like but also remember it's just well that's, 16 that's, color that's probably because that's probably like a gif or something right yeah, um, that's my guess it's, but generally well that's this is kind of a whole thing when I roll over it, but my cursor's not working. Um, also, remember, like, I mean, it's coming to your phone, right? Mm-hmm. So it may not be the highest, highest quality. It says HD, 60 frames per second. Um, but, I mean, that's kind of, we, we, we've really boiled down the, hey, here's a Google Glass that claims to do about everything. And now here, here's this Glass's device that basically does one thing. Yeah. Well, I guess two things now, officially, right? Okay, are you usually clutching like all your drinks? I am over holding there? all What's of my drinks. In case you there? weren't wondering if I was actually drinking, I am <laughs> drinking both of them. <laughs> I'm alternating. Like, I just realized you're just like, like, like I can't holding let any them. of these. I, love them. I can't let any of these leave my my my, <laughs> my reach. person. One's keeping me warm. Jeez. One's keeping me cool. <laughs> so, are just... these, so are these banned from the basement? Yes. Yeah probably with the snapchat that would be really fun though can you call <laughs> like is, is that is that in the like you know i mean obviously you no know, cell phones and stuff but where people looking out for like like hey no camera glasses are we still looking out for stuff like that um i well i don't know i haven't seen any camera glasses try to come through i've seen people try to come through with like go gopros on themselves it's yeah. kind of obvious yeah, yeah. but or, or people have been sneaky like setting their phones in pockets and like you'll never notice mm-hmm. and it's kind mm-hmm. of obvious yeah. But no one with glasses. I've never seen anyone try to come in with any sort of glasses. That could be you. It could be. Try it, Chilla. <laughs> I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna wear these with the Google Glass over top. Have them all. Wear them all simultaneously. I do remember your predecessor wouldn't let me go in with Google Glass because I'm like, well, that that would be a nice little clip thing. But yeah, it wasn't that was no. Um, Chilla. What is this last link here? So I'm, trying, I don't, I'm, trying, I don't to, I'm own, trying to catch so, up with it. So I don't own any mini systems like the mini. Oh, like the PlayStation Nin- Mini Nintendo. Nintendo yeah. Mini PlayStation. Did you get a? Did you get a Nintendo? Like, or no, um, I got a PlayStation. You got a PlayStation. Yeah. So and I'm and playing I, a lot of Intelligent Cube, and I, and I constantly bring up the Turbo Graphics 16 because that was, was your jam. That was my jam. That was your jam. Um, so they're making a Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. Mm-hmm. And they announced it's going to include Splatterhouse, yes, um, <laughs> Bonk's Revenge, Dungeon Explorer. So a lot of the games like the um, Dragon Spirit, R Type, like yeah. So I am def. This is gonna be my, this is gonna be my mini system. <laughs> even I, I didn't even pick up the PlayStation because I liked the PlayStation games because uh, they really don't hold up too well. It was because it was twenty five dollars. <laughs> Like it, that made so much sense. Do they have a price point for this yet? It's going to be ninety nine dollars. You're going to play a hundred dollars for how many Turbo Graphics sixteen games? I don't know, a bunch. A bunch. A bunch. <laughs> oh, 50, 50. Seven. Never mind. Fifty to fifty seven. Fifty seven included titles for the it's retro like two console. Bucks a, two bucks a pop. That's not bad. It's not, that's that's kind of like the place here. It's like, well, I'm paying like a buck a piece. Who cares if Tekken three doesn't hold up? Yeah. <laughs> right. So I mean, it is tough. Some of those are. Man. And they, they just added the, the article I read was they added more to it. So who knows by next March, we're just going to drop it could the, be even more. We're going to drop the end. Wow. This list is pretty good. 
Remaining 32 games, Japanese, uh, this is the Japanese language lineup of the PC Engine coming to. So wait, is this, am I looking the, the, at two different lineups there's, there's here? There's two different lineups. There's, so there's like, yeah. for each region, there's going to be a different lineup? Yep. And this is the. Because that's considered the Konami retro console. Okay. The bottom list is the Konami retro console. The top list is the Turbo Graphics. And the top, top list. I guess the first list is everything they added to. And Konami is what they're putting out. Or Konami is the company putting this yeah. out. So Dragon Spirit's one that I remember on the NES, and then obviously a better version on there. Air Zonk is going to be on this. Bong's Revenge. Bomberman 93. I think both of those Space I have. Space Harrier. Okay. I don't know if All you remember. Right. Play. I played that in the arcade before I played it. Man. The most, the most of what I was remembering... Game Pro TV, and and that's when I was like, man, this Turbo Graphics 16 looks so cool. Um, Katie, yes. Um, Ninja recently moved to Mixer. Yep. And he's been hanging out there, and I think he's been kind of bashing. Was it was did I hear he was bashing Twitch or something? Oh yeah. Or something? Did you see what Twitch did to them? But uh, <laughs> and so I guess Twitch Twitch responded to a point here, and I can't. So I, I, I'm over my uh, Washington Post bit here, uh, yeah. but <laughs> uh, but but did Twitch do this, or is this just something that happened? I guess it depends on who you ask. Um, so what happened here? So essentially, his page went dormant, mm -hmm. and it went to a 404 error page, and so it recommended other streams for you to watch. And uh, one of the streams it was recommending was a, a porn stream. And so, if you were looking Wait, for some gamer, first I didn't of know all, there was porn yeah, there's, are there, there porn streams on Twitch? Oh come on! I mean, <laughs> I, mean I guess I'm surprised. I oh come on. haven't <laughs> accidentally come. This is your first or? awesome cast. <laughs> As she clutches her alcohol. My alcohol. Oh my god! I don't have a problem. You, you have, have a the problem. problem. Yes. So there is. Yes. Yeah, surprise! There is pornography on Twitch. Surprise! Oh, that was the whole topic there just telling you that there's it's not that ninja had no. this this situation it was just that hold on i am really i like is it okay it doesn't come right up oh wait drunken robot pornography there you go that's a channel that's a category mm. <laughs> what oh are I there are, do they tag pages nsfw uh they they kind of have to don't they i don't know this just is showing venom i i don't i don't get what <laughs> Now I'm Googling Twitch porn. Hold on. Yeah. Like, is this, this doesn't seem verifying my channel. No, no. I really should turn the screen away Twitch from Twitch CEO, CEO said sorry. Uh, free porn. Okay. No, that's not, that's not what that looks like. If you, oh no, I'm sending it. I see. I'm sending it to the switcher. That's why I'm not seeing it. We'll just back off of that for a minute. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hey, you know what? He's making a lot of money over there. <laughs> yeah, he was doing pretty well. Uh, so surprised if you were looking for a ninja, you found Hey, porn. it's like, hey, we could follow ninja, but we're too distracted by this porn that Twitch put in front of us. <laughs> Is that them knowing their audience? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what else we got here? What time is it? Hey, it's about that time. And I just closed the document. Hey, you got anything else you guys want to touch on here before we move on? Ooh. In, a, in the story no, I lineup. I hit you know about those? Things. Chilla? I think you hit all mine. <laughs> we hit all you, the you, stories. You hit the end of the internet. I hit the end of the <laughs> internet. Goodbye. Oh, wait, no. Verizon sells Tumblr to WordPress for a lot oh, yeah, less than $1 billion. Dollars. Oh, yeah. Who so put that in there? Me. I forgot oh, about okay. that. Yeah, so... Uh, it had porn in the title, so I figured it was yours. <laughs> it was mine. <laughs> hey, welcome to Porncast with Dutters. Um, yes, so uh, Tumblr has been sold again from Verizon to WordPress, which is very, very interesting because very both different blogging sites. Uh, the original, when Tumblr was first sold, it was for like $1 billion. Then it dropped down to like $20 million It was sold to Verizon. And then the rumor is it was less... Anywhere for, I saw anywhere from three million to four million dollars. So the value of Tumblr has dropped uh, as part of the sale. They did. They are maintaining the porn ban. On but, and it could that be way. said that the porn ban may be one of the things that made it drop into value. Well, but I feel like I feel like it wasn't just the fact that the porn content left the platform because I used to read like a bunch of, hey, here's how I made this cosplay 
piece for my outfit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like those kinds of things. Well, like all yeah, those people the, got yeah. mad that they, yeah. they considered it censorship. Yeah. Well, it wasn't. So then everyone else left it too. Was, well, also it wasn't just porn. It was anything that was, I think it was anything that was like an alt sexual identity thing okay, got labeled as that, porn but... and banned. So it wasn't just like, hey, all the nudie pics are gone. Mm-hmm. It was these people that had this as a platform for whatever self-identification thing or, or, or whatever the case and, you know, the, the different versions of that that are out there. Like, this was a place, it, it was a classic place where those people found their identity and found a community um, early on when there wasn't one anywhere else. And and I think that's what they smacked down that pissed people off mm-hmm. because now you just took that away from, from people that really needed it. Mm-hmm. So, um, so that doesn't help. <laughs> um I heard they're going to move it to the WordPress back end. She's like, what? <laughs> they're like, so, so Tumblr, not like that. <laughs> How much of that have you drank? I don't know. <laughs> but everything's fun. So, no, so you're Tumblr, just, I, I can almost sit in off How are you crimes. coordinated enough right now to like, so you have both of those, you're like, you're like <laughs> wide clawing both of those. With my laptop. <laughs> and your laptop over there. We need like a shelf, yeah. like a shelf table a, a lap table for people yes like you this is why i'm a marketing ninja guru what, what do we use now <laughs> to describe this oh are we allowed to use ninja again for marketing is it uh, is, that, is that coming back around that makes me want to vomit yeah, yeah. You, if anyone ever referred to me as some sort of ninja or guru i'd probably just smack them okay rock star uh yeah, anyway. obviously <laughs> no it's a mic <laughs> <laughs> oh anyways hey uh you know Speaking of rock stars, how about superheroes? Uh, we do a lot of stuff here. I mentioned the one video we did earlier um, here at Sidekick Media Services, uh, services hiding in the bowels of Sorgatron Media Studios. Uh, from sporting events to music video production to conferences and everywhere in between. Uh, we just did this weekend uh, a lo- another live stream, a, wrestle- a live professional wrestling production to Facebook Live. Uh, that was uh, went without a hitch for the most part. As soon as everybody started getting in places, uh, but <laughs> a lot of other fun stuff. We got a music video shooting this weekend. Another one with our friend Nick Ivan, and uh, of course, uh, that I've been I've been hired gun for uh, multiple things. Uh, a, a podcast live stream last week. It sounds like I'm going to be helping out with a conference next week. Uh, a lot of fun stuff going on. Then a, a pretty big live podcast is going to be coming up uh, in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, we can't wait to tell you guys about that we'll be a part of if you need a uh, sidekick to your superhero project help us with your next big thing go find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com that's a little that's mi- producer missy and katie uh, uh poking around in some stuff there um helping out some of our friends in the podcasting world and uh, otherwise i mean we're just bringing it all together Hey, a lot of stuff going on. First of all, uh, you have... uh, Hey, it's turned in the uh, first edition, which is actually kind of a pre-show interview. It's uh, which I think is affectionately referred to inside inside the podcasting podcast. (laughs) Are you with me? Are you with me? Because it's the behind the the scenes of the inside podcasting podcast, but it's inside the inside inside... Damn it. Just two insides. See, this, I'm not talking on the show, so I don't need to get this right. Okay, so <laughs> it's just I, I but we've been working with the host on that stuff. But season one is launching. You can check out the preview uh, right now. Inside podcasting um, is on iTunes, and I'm sure your other podcasters as well uh, by now. And then that first edition, that kind of pre-interview that was recorded actually right here in uh, Sorgatron Media Studios, uh, is going to be available Wednesday. With the first interview with Ian Ch- Ian Chillog of Everything Is Alive will be launching in a week from tomorrow on Wednesdays, and then look out. There's, there's actually going to be a little bit of a, a post interview um, um, coming up within the weeks in between as well. Uh, six are in the can. That's the first season. So go check that out over the next month and a half. Um, I had a lot of fun editing these, and uh, you learn a lot about um, again, kind of. I kind of call it podcasting on a different level because this is these are people at, uh, you know, the, the the New York Post and 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 uh, Slate and and working with Luminary, uh, doing those kinds of things. Um, so uh, you, you get a lot of insight about hosting and, and site uh, podcast development um, from some of the pros doing that. A lot of pros will be on podcast movement that apparently is happening this week in Orlando because a lot of people are going that I know that I wasn't aware of. So. 
Okay. <laughs> so that's happening. Also, uh, Pittsburgh Current Podcast will be happening on uh, Thursday morning. And uh, I know we have a guest lined up there, too. Go go tune in for that. And check out the last couple of weeks. We've had a lot of... We had Rob Rogers talking about the um, the Brood on Broadway Kickstarter that's going on. And uh, Gab Vanessa was on last week um, talking about comedy. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of fun stuff there. Katie, anything going on with you? No. <laughs> it's out there. It's, it's out, out there. there. Just go sign up for stuff, right? Yeah, go sign up. Um, yeah, so Scream District... Uh, we'll be releasing the opening dates and the tickets soon, but uh, yeah, come check out the basement and the our new escape room, stalked by a killer in the strip district, which is super duper exciting. And if you are a member of Scarehouse Ambassador Group, you can find that by liking the Scarehouse page um, or on our email list. We're going to be giving those folks for first access to the uh, tickets nice. to both. The I just found the Ambassador Group by accident. Yeah, fine. <laughs> I'm like, there. oh, what is this? Hanging out. I'm I'm trying to get more engaging with my ambassador friends, and mm-hmm. <laughs> good, good. I, I love the fact that. Um, Missy was with me for Steel City Con this weekend, and we do an email sign up and we give away tickets to, like for the basement for this weekend. And um, everybody's like, "You don't send a lot of email blasts, do you?" And I'm like, "Absolutely not. It's me that sends them, and it's horrifying, and I hate it. Mm-hmm. So don't worry, you're never getting too many email blasts for me." And I was super excited. That's, like I started, I, I rejuvenated our email list for the wrestling, mm-hmm. and um, and and watched it drop like ten users <laughs> because i actually started doing one to two a week for with releases mm-hmm. so that goes like new information i was like hey this is out hey this is out because we put a lot out through the site um so but again you saw that kind of like dip going on there <laughs> so you know but it wasn't it wasn't too bad it was just probably like oh i'm signed up for this well that's ending <laughs> you know and i get that Oops. every once in a while too when i'm like i don't mm-hmm. remember signing up for this you know mm-hmm. that i completely signed up for three years ago or something yep. right so um uh, the, yeah no i, I never see I, I usually end up with I usually end up getting the uh, YouTube um, notification before I get your email, hmm. which oh, actually really? probably is the way it should be. Yeah. yeah, I mean that makes sense. You get the early access, right? And then once that filters out, you know, uh, Chilla, I'm composting. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna st- I'm gonna start a podcast, the inside the compost and naps podcast, and composting podcast, In- and then we'll do a uh, inside the inside compost podcast. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> Don't go inside the compost pile, though. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Chillatech.net. Chill on the Twitter. John Chill on the Facebook. Soon to be Chill at Compost a- on the New Age Tumblr. You have any pictures up from your uh, travels recently? I don't. I will have pictures up from Steel City Con from over the weekend. Ooh. And I purchased a number of Legos Uh-oh. figures. Oh, so. We need to pair you with Mad Mike on Monday nights. I know you don't talk about wrestling, but we end up talking about Legos on the wrestling podcast on Monday nights. And I have a feeling you guys will get along. So I got, for my birthday, and I don't know if I mentioned it. Did I mention it on here? The I got Tony Stark's lab. Playset. Oh, wow. That's an awesome. awesome playset. Really? Highly, highly oh, recommend. The Lego, right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, and then be, because it's a, and I'm sorry, I'm going off and you're trying to end no, the show. This is, this no, is it's what, about Legos. Uh, fine. Yeah, no, no, this is great. So this it, is perfect. The interesting thing is, and I don't know for the last Steel City Con that you've come to, and I don't know if anyone was at Wizard World, which I know you were at. I was. Um, <laughs> There are people that have massive, massive amounts of not not Lego sets, but the Lego guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they're, I mean, they're not all official Lego brand, mm-hmm. but like they have Santa Claus Yoda. Like they, they have all of the characters from Overwatch. They have army guys. They have every character under the sun from Marvel, Star Wars. You name it, they got it. And it it's just Lego figurines as far as the eye can see. And they're highly addictive to collect. <laughs> so Yep, I saw a chilla and a mini chilla. Yes. Looking for Christopher him. was looking for his guys. He's not I a got, mini chilla anymore. He's not. He's got really He's like the size of a seven year old in a five year old's body. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> He's gonna be six. They're estimating he'll be six three. Wow! So wow, not from my side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's gonna he's gonna be a basketball player. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, well, anyways, thank you everybody. Thank you, producer Missy. Producer Missy, where will you be this weekend? Plugs. <laughs> 
what am I doing this weekend? I don't know. I think you're. I think you're filming wrestling with me. I was gonna say wrestling, <gasps> yes. wrestling, and I think more wrestling. Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, we're gonna be live. Uh, I actually, you know, it, it's wrestling related, but a good cause. Uh, Stomp out cancer has happened in Lamont Furnace, uh, PA. Go look up uh, Stomp out cancer uh, wrestling show on your Facebook for more information. And of course, uh, we do have a link over at PittsburghWrestling.com as well. A lot of big guys are going to be there, and it's for a good cause. It's third time doing it with uh, Mike and Kenny and the crew, and uh, really looking forward to that. And Missy, did you just send me Drunken Robot pornography on Steam? Yes, it's actually a video game. Yeah, it's it's not oh. as exciting as it it's sounds. not as exciting. Well, as it's it not sounds. nearly as exciting. Yeah. So. However, disappoint. Show title. <laughs> okay, drunken robot pornography. <laughs> oh, it's a first person shooter. Word presses back end. Uh, robots Word attack. presses back end. <laughs> Never even <laughs> talking about. It. Thank you oh, so dang. much, everybody, for joining us. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.